going on everybody? Fra Hashem checking in from Flick Refinery and today I want to put everything together for my makeup artists, my beauty influencers, anybody that wants to start to get this editorial beauty type of aesthetic right at the house yourself. Um, we're going to look at the whole process today. I'm going to look at some images I took with a friend Asia. She's a makeup artist and an artist herself but uh, she really killed this shoot and there's some definite key things that you can learn. Uh, one being the lighting. Right, right now I'm using a big soft light to light me here and in that background you see a little blue spot that's a hard light. So in this shoot we actually decided to test out what a soft light look will look like versus a hard light look. And as you'll see you can really change the drama in a shot. If you want it more dramatic, you want more deep shadows, we go with a harder light. But if you want softer beauty, more clean look on the face uh, and the retouch, we go with a softer light. So we'll look at some of the different challenges that these different types of lighting styles presents as well as how it looks on the retouch. Because what I want you to start doing is we're going to be more intentional with our work. We're going to light a certain way because we want it to look a certain way when we pull it into Photoshop and get down to the retouch. I think we killed this, so we're going to learn a lot today, but let's get into it. so we're in the computer now we're going to check out these images on the left hand side here we have an example of our soft light setup this is both of these images are taken with the same light source but on the left I'm using a soft light diffusion it's a big octa box it's got double layers of diffusion in it and basically what it's going to give you is this super clean aesthetic uh, anytime I pull this this light style out and I start to shoot with it I'm amazed with how clean it looks it doesn't usually leave a whole lot of drama in the shadows like you can see here on the face and on the skin it's a nice smooth fall off uh, it's very forgiving on the skin so it doesn't bring out all of the different defects or the different imperfections that we all have everybody nobody's face is perfect everybody has little imperfections um, so this is the lighting setup that you'll see a lot of beauty photographers use because it just gives quality work without you having to do too much in post-processing. It's already gonna give you the most aesthetically pleasing look on the skin, and it's gonna save you a lot of time on the back end when you pull it into the computer to go ahead and start to process it. But now, let's go ahead on this right side here. So on this side here, I'm using a hard light source. This is a reflector. This is something that is not typically used a lot in beauty, but some photographers do. I just love how the story is so much different, right? You have all of this shadow, you have so much more drama. To me, there's more dimension in the shot. So uh, obviously this is completely up to you on how you want to choose to light it, but I want you to pay attention to the differences in what happens when I choose these different styles here. Uh, I think both images are great and depending on what you want to do, what your vision was for the shoot, you can decide, but you need to be, we all need to be more intentional with how we're choosing to shoot, how we're choosing to light. But now we're gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you some of the difficulties that happens when you choose to go with a more maybe creative or hard lit setup versus your more traditional soft light uh, beauty setup. All right, so now we have our hard light setup. This is how it looked retouched. Let's bring it all the way back to the beginning and look at how it looked before, straight out of the camera. So again, with this shot, I really love all of the different, I love how the shadow looks. I just love the drama that it presents. We had her think about different things to pull out different emotions and she nailed this shot, but this is how it looks straight out of the camera. One of the main things you should see right now is how that highlighter is now popped and how you can see more detail in all of the imperfections. This is because the hard light is not typically made for this beauty type of work. I actually even cut the hard light a little bit by putting a diffusion in front of it. But even so, um, these highlighter specs were killing me. And basically now I'm not spending just 40 minutes to retouch this image to get it to the end result. Now we're looking more closer to the hour point. Um, and uh, to be honest, there's just nothing you can do with some of these uh, little specs that you see that light is coming in hard it's hitting against the little pieces in the highlighter and it's bouncing off looking crazy and white but I was able to clean it up to a point where I think it is still dope 
uh, and lesson learned. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna put highlighter on our face for our beauty shoots. We're gonna make sure that we add it in on in Photoshop. I'll show you the different layers. So this is how we started. I uh, started to clean different things up, remove some hairs. This is my dodge and burn layer. This is honestly, this is usually where we're gonna spend the, the most amount of time on the retouch. I really recommend using dodge and burning. We can get into it deeper in a different video, but basically I'm raising up places that look too dark and I am reducing some of the dark spots by adding some light. And it's a very non-destructive process. I can go in and dial it in and back and out like we talked about in a previous video. And this next layer, I'm adding in my highlights, I'm adding in my shadows. But again, there wasn't too much I can do to battle against what happened with this highlighter in this shot. And it's just a great example of the fact that hard light, it don't really care about you in terms of detail. It's going to give you all your detail. Um, so yeah, I have to make a decision. Is it worth getting the shot that I really want and then having to take a lot of time to edit it in the back end? Maybe. But if it's a client that doesn't have a whole lot of time or if it's a client that needs a faster turnaround, I definitely wouldn't choose this type of a lighting setup. So with this, I did use some frequency separation. This is typically what you're going to see people use for quicker retouch methods. Um, it's a way that you can basically start to move the colors of the skin and even them out. Uh, you can see that it, it, it softens things up. So since I was using a hard light, I did want to use some frequency separation to just kind of soften things up and have it fall off on the face a little bit nicer. And then we get into our color work here. You know, I start to push the image. This is all up to you in terms of how you want it to look. I just start to push it. And since we're working in Photoshop, everything's non-destructive. So if we didn't like how it looked here, you can scale it all the way back or you can bring it in heavy. Either way you want to go, um, this is where you can really start to get creative, right? We've cleaned the image up. Now we're starting to move and, and make it look the way we want it to. Uh, again here, I'm starting to do different things with the levels, of the lighting levels. I'm bringing certain areas up, bringing certain areas down on a, more of a global scale. And, you know, finally we got to this, this final version of it and we'll look at it again from the beginning before and after. Now, side by side, I, I'm actually really glad we did decide to add the extra highlighter because it's such a good visual. It shows you clearly what happens when you choose to use your hard light and when you choose to use your soft light. Clearly, you can see that that soft light is much more forgiving. Look at the highlight specs here versus on the right side here with these highlights. You can see every single little speck and just depending on which way the light is hitting each and every little speck, it's just bringing all the attention out of it. Um, both dope shots. I probably won't be using the highlighter uh, on, on different shoots. We're going to probably choose to pull it in here in Photoshop, but this was a great learning experience. I like to test and learn and continue to grow. I never want to get stagnant in my work. So yeah, I, I didn't know exactly what happened when you put a bunch of highlighter on. So we went and we did it um, and we we're still able to capture a great image. It just took a little bit of more work on the back end and time is money. So we start to make decisions based on, okay, well, how much time do I have to edit? Uh, what's the budget? Where am I shooting? What lighting will I use? Um, how much time do I have to retouch? These are the different things that you can start to think about when you study your light sources, when you study how you're gonna actually put this whole thing together. So again, I want my peoples to start thinking of this whole process in its entirety. There's no quick way to get really good at this. You have to study each and every part of it. But when you look at this thing as a whole and you look at the whole process, uh, you can start to make decisions differently. And this is something that I didn't really do until later on in my shooting or photography career. Um, thinking of things intentionally and just having a plan of action. Um, it's, it's a great way for you to grow and get better. And if you, from the beginning, start to develop a plan you're going to skyrocket in your growth. You're going to start to be amazed with the different things that you can produce. All right, so you probably got something good out of that video. Make sure you share this with your favorite makeup artist, your friend that you know is dope, and maybe they don't have the access to high-end photography. Uh, let's start thinking differently about the fact that they can probably learn to do these things themselves. I'll be honest with you guys, like this light that I use to light these two images was an $80 light doesn't really matter about how expensive your gear is when it comes to this whole process you can learn to use what you already have or make small investments to get a really high-end result 
uh, these images are great examples of that. So make sure you continue to tap in with me. We're going to keep studying these different styles. If you like this video, comment below what you liked about it. If you have any questions, shoot them in the comments. I'm going to get back to all of you. But again, thanks for checking in with me, and I'll see you next time.